Well, hey everybody, welcome back to The Hangar and the current episode of the Xena Super Duty build. I've been working on a lot of little things, so I've got a lot to show you. Let's just get started. All right, first thing we'll talk about real quick is my second Sidewinder missile I'm making. I am doing a different paint scheme on it. I have to sand the blue paint here. You see how it crinkled right here? I'm not sure why it did that, but once it's dry, I'm gonna sand it. I actually, you can see I already, I already sanded this, the first coat, because it crinkled. And then I cleaned it, sprayed this part again, and it crinkled in the same spot. Again, I don't know why. So I think what I'm gonna do when this is dry is sand it off again, shoot another coat of primer, and repaint the blue. And if you're wondering why I'm painting it blue, I've seen pictures of Sidewinder missiles that are gray with a blue front, and I'm guessing it's probably a trainer missile. So this will be blue, this will be black, and then this little dome up here where it would be a clear lens, I'll paint silver. And I'm going to do my forward fins a little bit differently, so I don't have those on there yet. These are two and a half inch Adele clamps, which fit around the two and a half inch tube. And this will connect the missile to the, uh, the support on the wing. Speaking of the support on the wing or the mount for the missile, I did make one and it is at the welders now getting welded together. While we're showing the wing here, you can see I have my slat attach brackets attached. They are all on except the very inner ones. The inner slat brackets I can't attach until I have these fairings uh, painted and installed because you can see those little tabs go through those slots. These are actually all ready to go for the next step. And the next step is to mix up a batch of resin uh, filled with micro balloons and spread it on there and then sand it off. And what that does, it just fills all the little imperfections in there. So one of these days I need to head over to Len's house, mix up some resin, get that done, and I can prime and paint these, get them installed, and then I can attach that last slat attach bracket. Now once that last bracket is installed, I can finish building my slats. Here is one of the inboard sections here. And the uh, Zenith online instructions kind of show you how to put a board here. And then I can't show you because this isn't put together, but what'll happen is I'll flip it over. You put it against here and you put some straps over around the table to pull it tight and then it can get riveted together. That's at least a three man job. So I need to wait till I can get some people together and we'll finish up the slats. Get those primed and painted and then I can install those on the wings. Boy, it sure would be nice to have those done. Now this will be difficult to show you just because I can't really get up in there too easily. But I've connected up the elevator servo. You can see this little part right here. That's where it attaches the cable from the servo to the elevator cable. And obviously there's, there's another one a little bit further back. Uh, I'm not sure if it's adjusted properly yet, so that's why everything is open still on the bottom and I have not safety wired my turnbuckles yet, just in case I need to make some final adjustments. Now I will make those final adjustments once I have the flapper ons installed because I want to be able to move the stick in the full range of motion to calibrate both the aileron and the elevator servos. So right now it, they're hooked up, but that's about as far as I can go until I can really get the controls set and then calibrate the servos based on the throw of the ailerons and the elevator. Now probably the most exciting update is the firewall forward. And I'll show you everything I've been doing firewall forward. I now have installed all of the hoses firewall forward well, and firewall aft, for the fuel and oil system. These are all from aircraft specialty. They're steel braided lines, pressure tested, and fire sleeved. Now, unfortunately, everything is just temporarily installed right now. Nothing is, is tight because I still have to remove my engine because the back baffles here, uh, they're, they're pre-cut from Zenith but they're not trimmed properly, they don't fit. And also, I can't get them in here on both sides between the mount and where they, they go in here uh, with the engine in here, especially 
because I have to trim and fit them, I'm gonna to have to put them in, you know, mark it, take it out, trim it, put it back in, mark it, take it out, trim it. And I just can't do that with the engine installed. I really, really don't wanna take this engine back out, but I do have to do that yet. So uh, none of the hoses are permanently attached. Like I said, I will make a separate video on all these hoses. We are gonna have on the kitplaneenthusiast.com website a complete firewall forward hose package available. This one obviously will be for the carburetor version and then there will be another one for the fuel injected version. We already have the firewall aft hoses available. If you go to the website, they're on there for the Stoll, the Cruiser and the Super Duty. But these lines are just beautiful. They are just really, really nice. And one of the things I like about these also is the new style of fire sleeve. You can see this isn't the big bulky fiberglass uh, sleeve that you have to seal the ends. These are all really nice and come all professionally done. So what a nice uh, package. If you follow Kit Plane Enthusiast on Facebook, you'll know that I have my oil cooler mounted here. All these steel parts I had powder coated black. It does take quite a bit of work to get this to fit because I had to open up this hole in here. It wasn't positioned properly to, for that to fit. And then what also what I did was once I was done and had it mounted, uh, I took these pieces here, which are you know, about this long, and I cut off the extra you know, that I didn't need just to trim it and make it smaller. But one of the things I'm a little bit worried about is this oil cooler, because this has a lightweight starter, is now moved about two and a half inches or so outboard. When Zenith designed this firewall forward kit for the Super Duty, all they really did was took the 801 components and put it together for this. And it's, it's, it's not exactly correct because for example, when the 801's an old airplane and when they designed all this stuff, they had the old heavy starters on it where the solenoid was mounted, I think back behind the starter. Well now with these new lightweight starters, it's on the side so, you know, the instructions show this oil cooler mounted all the way over here. And I can't move it over anymore because of the starter. So I have it mounted further out. And my hope is that it fits in the cowl. And I, I don't have to fiberglass in like a little bump on the bottom of the cowl or something to fit this. Sort of like I had to do on my cruiser. So anyway, I guess we'll, we'll find out once I, I fit the cowl. But anyway, this is all done. The only thing it's not completely done is this screw right here is just a, a cheap screw. I have to go find a good one with that thread. Um, so anyway, that's just holding it on there temporarily for now. I have my oil pressure and fuel pressure senders mounted right here. And I put these uh, connectors on here. And if you can tell, I put a female one on this one and a male one on here just so when the wire's coming from the, the Dynon EMS, you know, I can't hook it up backwards. It'll only go one way. Just like I did with my, my nav strobe lights and uh, leading edge recognition lights in the wings. I kind of reversed the, the, the connectors. But anyway, these two are all ready to go. Now, one of the things I've been working on today is the wiring firewall forward. There's a whole bunch of wires coming from the Dynon EMS uh, through the firewall up into the, the firewall forward part. And I, I realized looking at the, the Dynon installation manual, there's a lot of wires in that bundle that either don't get used or don't need to be firewall forward. So I've kind of rerouted a lot of the, the wires if they didn't need to be firewall forward. And I have what's left. Uh, so like, I forget what each one of these is for, but there's, a, there's wires that go to the, the oil pressure, fuel pressure, this is the Dynon uh, uh, fuel flow indica indicator right there. So that gets wired in. And then I still have, once I remove the engine and final install it, I have all of these EGT and CHT wires to run. And in all the wires that are left, I have these two are shielded cables. These go to the left and right mag. Then I have this wire here. This one is for, oh, this one's for a landing light. And this connects to a, the landing light switch on the panel. I didn't know if I was gonna put a landing light in the cowl. If I do, it'll probably be somewhere right about here on the bottom of the cowl. I'm not sure if I'll use this or not, but I wanted to run a wire just in case. 
Then we have uh, the starter solenoid. So that goes to the starter solenoid. And uh, there's a couple left on the side here I'll show you. So this bigger white wire right here goes to the fuel pump. So it's gonna get routed down here and down here. And then you can see right here, it connects to the fuel pump and the fuel pump is located right here. So it's grounded right there, if you can see on the mounting screw, and then there's the power wire for it. Now I also have these, these long wires here that I temporarily connected to the shunt. Again, this goes to the Dynon EMS. And the reason they're temporarily connected is because there's a one amp fuse that goes between basically the wire and the shunt. Now to put a fuse in line there, I made this little bracket here. And if you saw this on Facebook, I did post it, but it was painted red. And uh, I painted it red because it was the only color I had in paint. <laughs> and then uh, I remembered that I actually had a bunch of white paint left over from my missiles. So I actually took off the red paint and painted it white. But what this does here is this little bracket holds two fuses or fuse holders, I should say, that go in there just like that. And then this bracket will get riveted. You can see the two holes I've drilled right there. It gets riveted right here. So what I'll do is I'll take the two wires here, connect one to each side of there, and then from the other side, it'll come down and go to the shunt. And then I'll have my, my one amp fuses in line there. So this little bracket I painted this morning, it's not 100% cured yet, so I'm just gonna wait a day or so. And then uh, what I'll do is I will rivet it on just like that, and then I can put it all, put it all together, put these in and, and finish the wiring. Now right here is the EMS, and this is the connector in the back. So the wires come up here and then go through to the firewall. But there's five black ground wires. You can kind of see them looped around here. And they come around here, um, up here, and then let me see if this thing will focus. I have five wires going into here and then one wire going up to right here. Okay guys, my stupid camera won't focus, but this wire right here, I'll just show you a picture of it, is the ground wire for all of those five grounds from the EMS. Now there's a bunch of other wires, uh, like manif there's two manifold pressure wires and another sensor wire that I don't think I'll ever use, but I didn't wanna just cut it off. What I did was I just looped it around here in case I ever do need to use those wires. And the same with this kind of bundle here. There's some wires on here like these, these ones here that come from the, the main Dynon that I don't think I'll ever need. But you never know, years from now, if I add equipment or a sensor or a light or something like that, I might need them. So I kind of hate to cut them off. So I've looped them around here. You know, the only disadvantage is when you start doing that, you get a lot more wire in here and it starts looking sloppy and, you know. But anyway, that's, that's the extra loops of wires I have here. Oh, this wire here, let me show you this wire. That wire comes from the EMS and it is the pedo heat status wire. And you can see on the dyno on here, it has, I'm trying to do this without shaking the camera, but it has the pedo heat on or off. So right now my pedo heat is off, but watch, but it says on. When I turn the pedo heat on, it says off. And then a little, it might be washed out on the screen, but there's a yellow light, it says it's off. So it's backwards. If I turn the pedo heat off, then it says on. So I'm not sure, I'm guessing I can probably go into Dynon and reverse that. I'm not really sure, but anyway, it's backwards right now, so I'm not sure how helpful that is. I don't know if you can read that. The white wire, it says pedo heat status. The white wire comes from the Dynon, the big Dynon connector, and then this brown with blue goes from the, the uh, EMS. So they get connected together, and that's what gives you that status. But like I said, it's indicating backwards, so I'm going to have to see if there's a way to reverse that. And then one of the last wires I have to connect up is the, this is from the EMS again, and it's the battery voltage. What I want to do is connect this wire right here to the very main bus. I could connect it there or here or here, because they're all connected together but that would give me the voltage of the, the bus. All right, I have my camera sitting in the airplane to, to kind of show you this here. 
But if you notice on the bottom right side of the Dynon screen, right here in red, it says uh, battery volts and it says zero. So if I take that red wire I just showed you and I touch it to the bus, now you can see it's reading the voltage. So it's 11.7 volts and I take it away, it goes zero. So this is, that's what that red wire does. It's the battery voltage that indicates on the Dynon. Now technically I kind of don't really need that because I have the voltage displayed here on this USB port. It just, it just automatically reads the voltage. But anyway, I have the voltage there and then it will be on the Dynon. One other little thing that I got done was I just installed my passenger seat belt and the passenger seat. And just today I bought wood to make the frame for the seat in the back. Now, I, I don't need a seat in the back. I'm not going to have a passenger back there, but I was trying to figure out a way just to fill that hole. And instead of making a cargo box, I'm just gonna make a thinly padded seat so it looks nice. And of course I can stack cargo on top of that seat. So I'll cut the wood to shape and I'll take it to a local uh, upholster and have done. I still have a bunch more of this material from these seats left so it'll match. Uh, so that'll be kind of neat to get that in there and finished up. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys because I kind of screwed up here. I have coming from each wing a wire and there's one over on that side there you can see. That is for the fuel uh, level indication and it's wired to the tank or to the, the fuel sender in the tank and then I had all that wire bound up in the wing but what I forgot to do was or I didn't really forget but I was just I had this wire it's really long and it's enough to go from the wing down and through the fuselage and connect to the dynon wherever it gets connected to but what I should have done was run a wire from the dynon back and then up in this channel or even behind the bulkhead because I have all the other wires. Let me see if I can show you here. All the other wires are, well, where can I put the camera? <laughs> see that channel right there? That's where all the wires are. And you can see the wires coming out and then the, uh, the pedostatic tubes and stuff. And then it goes into the wings. The problem now is I can't run this wire in here and back and I can't even run it down through this channel now. So if I wanna know my fuel levels, I gotta run this, both of these wires somewhere to get them up to the instrument panel. So I gotta figure out how to run those wires where it looks good, but they're kinda of hidden. <laughs> so oh, I wish I didn't do that. I, I wish I would've thought to run wires through the fuselage and up. And then what I could have done was just you know, cut this wire right here, put a connector on it, and it would already be a wire coming out and just connect it together. <laughs> That's how I was supposed to do it, but it didn't work out like that. So even though there's a lot of work to do yet, I kind of feel like I'm rounding third base and headed for home, getting this thing done. I feel like I'm on the home stretch now. Um, getting the slats done will be nice and getting those on. When that's done, I'll build the flap rons and get those on. Then I can rig the flight controls. All that will be done. And then it really just leaves firewall forward. I need to pull this engine off, get that baffling done, get the baffle painted, <laughs> put the engine back on. And I can, I can finally finish up connecting all the oil and fuel lines, finish up the wiring, get the cowl fit, put on the prop, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a lot of work yet, but when I come into the hangar in the morning and I try to figure out what I'm going to do, I'm kind of running out of things to do. There, so it's, I feel like most of it's getting done, but then when I really think about it, there's still a lot to do yet. So I guess this is the 90% done, 90% to go phase, but I am really looking forward to getting this thing done. Like I said, my goal was to fly to Oshkosh in 2024. That's still my goal, but I kind of don't think it's gonna make it just because there's so much to do. But Anyway, guys, I'll just keep you guys posted. I know there's a lot of people following along on this project, so I just kind of give you an update video to show you what I'm doing. And uh, next time I have something interesting to show you, I'll make another video.